Hello and welcome. Pause the video, try the problem on your own, and then resume the video when you're ready to see how I've solved it. Okay, so this problem, let's focus on the fact that they're asking us for the statement that is not always true. So what we're going to do is answer this question, and then we're going to talk about all of the choices here. And I, I suggest, unless you are feeling very confident in understanding how the sums and products of rational and irrational numbers work, including how you might got, possibly go about informally proving that, um, it, unless you're comfortable with all those things, stay tuned because there's a lot of things to talk about here with this problem. Okay, so which of these is not always true? It turns out that choice one is the answer right away. The product of two irrational numbers is irrational. That's not always true. Um, now, there's lots of ways to look at this. Uh, one of them, one of the cases that contradicts this is to take any square root that's irrational, like the square root of two. The square root of 2 is irrational. Why? Because if you write it as a decimal, it never ends, it never terminates. Terminates means end. And there's no repeating pattern. Um, so there's no repeating pattern in the digits that allows us to, re to represent it as um, the ratio of two integers. Because a rational number, rational, you can represent a rational number as the ratio, say, of a and b, where a and b are two integers, and b is not zero, because we can't divide by zero. That's what a rational number is. Integers are positive or negative whole numbers, and if you put a positive or negative whole number in the numerator and denominator, that's not zero, you've got a rational number. There's no way to re represent the square root of two as a rational number, therefore it's irrational. Now, what happens if we take the square root of two, though? and multiply it by another irrational number, namely itself. What happens? Well, here we're squaring a square root, right? And what happens there? Well, if you remember, the square root is a half power. Two to the one half means the square root. And if you're squaring that, you can see here that we, if you remember your laws of exponents, we'd multiply our uh, two exponents here. It's a half times two, which is two halves, or one, which is two to the first. So that equals two. In other words, if you take the square root of 2, an irrational number, and square it, you get a rational number. Now, 2 is rational because you can represent it as a fraction easily. It can be written as 2 over 1, or 4 over 2, or any ratio of two integers there. Oh, well, excuse me, uh, or an infinite sequence of uh, integers. Um, so there is a way to, to take irrational numbers, multiply them, and get out of the irrational universe. That means the irrational numbers are not closed under multiplication. That's how we say that. So the irrational numbers, I'll write number symbol here, are not closed for multiplication. Now again, when you say it's not closed for multiplication, that just means that you can use multiplication, right, as an operation with just irrational numbers and create a number that's not irrational. Um, Let's keep going. Now it goes about the products of rational numbers and so forth. But let's just look at one other example, um, addition. So turns out irrational numbers are not closed for multiplication or addition. And at first you might be like, well, how do we, how do we show that? Well, some irrational numbers, right, let's say you take the square root of 2 again, and you add it to its opposite. This is just a one case. Now in multiplication and addition, there are other cases you can play around with them. But here, if you take opposites and add them, what do you always get? You get zero, and zero is rational. So here we've taken two irrational numbers, we've added them, and created a rational result. That means that irrational numbers are not closed under addition as well. Um, so, so irrational numbers have these exceptions, right? If you add irrational numbers like the square root of 2 and the square root of 3, for example, you get another irrational number. But because there are exceptions, because there are ways to add opposites and get 0, or to multiply or square an irrational number and get an irrational, a rational result, they're not closed under multiplication. And some other examples, and I don't, I don't think I'm considering them all here, but for multiplication is really fun. You could take other examples like reciprocals. The square root of 2 times 1 over the square root of 2, that would get you 1. Any number in its reciprocal multiply gets you 1, and 1's rational. Also, anything times 0. The square root of 2 times 0 gets you 0. The zero product property takes any irrational number, multiplies it by a rational number, 0, and gets a rational 
result. Now that's that's a different example. I shouldn't have put it here, because um, the square root of two times zero is not the product of two irrational numbers. It's the product of a rational and irrational number, um, right? Which is different from what they have here. Sorry about that. So the product of two rational numbers is rational too. That's always true. Now you might know this. That if you take two rational numbers, you get a third rational number, a product that's rational, but you should have a way of maybe proving that. I think it's important, or informally proving it. So let's say you have two numbers, um, m and n. And let's say you, you say m is equal to a over b, right? And you can say it this way, where a and b are elements of the rational numbers, right? So you, for the rational numbers, you could write the word, or you could put the symbol. It's a q with a line. So a and b are both rational, but maybe a better way of saying that is, sorry, integers. Z, right, the z with two lines for integers. So this is just saying m is the ratio of two integers, a and b. Uh, and n is also the ratio of two other integers, let's call them c and d. Where a and b are also, oh, sorry, c and d are also integers. And what else? We have to say that b is not equal to 0 and c is not equal to 0. So, you know, if we're asked this question right here, we're just defining m and n as the ratio of two integers, which means they're rational, and you want to specify that b and d, excuse me, d, are not 0, right, because we can't divide by 0. So what happens, so m times n, the product of two, right, let's go back to choice two, we're looking at the product of two rational numbers, yes equals a times b times c over d. And here you can say this equals ac over bd. Now what does this mean? Well this means we know since a times c is a rational number, it's an integer, you don't you can say it is an integer or you can put this little e symbol I've been putting. That means it's an element of the integers. Same thing, it's an integer. And b times d is also an integer. Right? You can say since integers are closed under multiplication, that means that there's no way to multiply integers and get a non integer. You could try it, any combination. Um, AC and BD are also integers. And then lastly, what that means is that also, or therefore you could say, m times n equals ac over bd, and the ratio or the quotient or the fraction of the ration I wrote, the ratio of two, two integers are rational. Now this sounds like circular logic, but you're saying since integers are closed, right, a times c and b times d are both integers, and that this product, m times n, is the ratio of two integers, therefore the product of any two um, integers or rational numbers is also rational because the ratio of two integers is rational. So that might be a way if you had like a longer question you had to explain yourself, you could show that the product of any two rational numbers uh, is also rational. You might want to say here, I don't know, m and n are rational. You might say at the beginning, I should have said that. Since they are rational, we know that m is the ratio of two integers and so is n. And then everything proceeds from there. So choice two is always true. true. Choice three, the sum of two rational numbers is rational. This is also true. Now the proof, again, assume we start with the same stuff. M and N are rational, so all of this is true. M is the ratio of two integers, so is N. What do we know about M plus N? Right, what can we say there? Well, that would be A over B plus C over D again. Now, in order to add these two fractions, you want to get the same denominator, which is B times D, right? And in order to have A over B times D, you have to multiply the numerator by D as well, right? Remember, fraction conversions, you multiply both numerator and denominator by the same number, so you don't change the result or the value. And over here, we should multiply the numerator and denominator by b. So we get a times d plus c times b over db. 
Now here we could say pretty much the same stuff. db, right? db is an element of the integers. In other words, it's still an integer because integers are closed under multiplication. ad is an integer, and so is cb, and so is the sum of these two because the sum of integers and the product of integers are both closed. So ad plus cd is an element of the integers. You can say that it's closed under those operations, addition and multiplication, so it's still an integer. Therefore, we have the ratio of two integers and m plus n, the sum of any two or more rational numbers is still rational. So you can explain it that way. Finally, the sum of a rational number and an irrational number is irrational. Well, that's, it's always true that the sum of a rational number and irrational number is irrational, right? So let's just prove that really quickly. Now this one's a little bit tougher to prove. Um, let me clear off, what can I clear off here? Let's clear some of this off right here. All right, in case I need to scroll back and refer to my other proofs for something. Okay, so how do we prove this? Well, here we use a proof by contradiction. Um, so let's say um, you're looking at the sum of x plus a over b, and that equals c over d. What's the contradiction? Well, here we're assuming x is irrational, so it's irrational. And you could say that a over b is rational, and c over d is rational. So the contradiction is we're assuming that the sum of an irrational and rational is a rational result. That's the contradiction. It's the opposite of what we know to be true. Now when we do that, let's see what happens. So to figure out what x is, what irrational number x would satisfy this, we subtract a, b from both sides. a over b. So then we have what? x these cancel out to zero equals CD minus AB. Again, to get these two things so that we can actually subtract them, we get the same denominators. So I multiply this one by, oops, by D over D, and this one by B over B, and that enables us to write what? Well, C times B, or B times C, minus A over D times D over BD. So this means that x equals bc minus ad over bd. Now what, why is this a contradiction? Well this tells us, if we think about what we just said before, bd right, is an integer because the product of integers is also an integer. And so is bc and ad. And subtraction really is the same thing as addition of negatives. So that means that because integers are closed under addition and subtraction, this is also an integer which means that x has to equal the ratio of two integers. Therefore, our initial assumption is not true. We said x is irrational, but we're finding as we do this that x is in fact rational. Therefore, the original assumption is incorrect. It's a proof by contradiction. If our original assumption fails, that it must have been false to begin with. So that's that's a pretty tough one to prove. Uh, but again, there are ways to do it. And then you can also support it with examples. Um, and then, you know, there are other cases, then look at the product of rational and irrational. But again, if you have the product, let's say it's a number like 2 times the square root of 3, we have rational times irrational. This would be an irrational result, right? 2 square root of 3 is irrational as a whole. This is true for all cases except when the rational number you're dealing with here Right, that you're multiplying by is the number zero because zero times anything is zero, and that's a rational product. Right, this is zero product property. Anything times zero is zero. All right, this is a long video, but thanks for hanging in there. You might want to scroll back through it. Um, you want to be comfortable with all of this language. Thanks.